Hi everybody, welcome to this tutorial where we'll be looking at the difference between type and instance parameters. Now we're going to look at this from a structural standpoint and we're going to look at two types of families. I'm going to start off with the structural framing family. So you can see here that we have a beam. If I select this beam, this is really an out of the box beam from Autodesk. And you can see here that the structural material is driven by an instance parameter. So what does this mean? Well, if I go ahead and choose a new material, let's say I want this uh, yellow color here and click OK. You'll notice that just this instance changes. Now, that might be desirable in certain circumstances, but what I might want is to be able to choose a material and have all of the beams of that type change. If I wanted that, this would need to be a type parameter rather than an instance parameter. So I'm going to show you how we would go about changing that. So we can select the member and up on the ribbon here, you can see we have edit family. If I go ahead and select that, what I'm now going to do is go into the family types command. And you can see here quite clearly that we have our structural material. Notice the bracketed word default. This signifies that this is an instance driven parameter. If I select this parameter, in the bottom left hand corner of the dialog box, you can see that I can edit the parameter. Now, very simply here, I can now switch this from an instance to a type parameter. Notice as soon as I click OK, the bracketed word default is purged as this is now a type parameter. I can decide what I want to show by default. So in here, for example, I might come through and say, right, well, I'll start off with the S275 material. I'm going to load this back into my project. In this case, I'm not going to save it, but of course, in your environment, you may want to save this. So this is set for future projects. So I'm going to overwrite the existing version here. And this will just take a few seconds to do. So Revit's now going to update all of the framing elements from instance to type properties. OK, so once this is now done, you can now see that I can zoom into the members here. Now, what I'd like to do is now select this beam. Notice now that the material doesn't appear as an instance parameter. I'm going to need to now click Edit Type. And in the type parameters, you can now see that I have my structural material. So once again, let's go and choose a different type of material. Maybe here I want to go for the S275 blue. So we'll go ahead and select that type. And what you'll now notice when I click OK is all of the beams of that type will now go ahead and change to that blue color. So obviously for a productivity point of view, that's much better when dealing with a typical kind of framing. So following on from that, let's now start to take a look at some structural openings. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create a structural opening family from scratch. What we're going to do here is go to File, New Family. And in the family templates, I'm going to use a metric generic model. Now, what I'd like to do here is make this face based. If I make it face based, it will host onto any face of walls, floor slabs, beams, columns, foundations, and so on. So let's go ahead and choose this family. If I just open up the 3D view, you can see that we have this artificial solid representing the face that I'd like to host my opening on. So I'm going to go back to my floor plane, and first I'm going to set up my parametric framework. So I'm going to create some reference planes. As I do this, I'm holding down the shift key. This will enforce orthogonal drafting. And then we're going to set up some uh, dimensions. Now, what I would like to do here is go to annotate ribbon and click on the aligned dimension tool. And I'm going to create some equal dimensions. This will ensure that when I place my structural opening, it is centered about the position I pick. Now, as well as making these equal, what we also need to do is create some additional parameters. And this is going to control the length and width of my structural opening. So I'm going to select this dimension here. And up on the ribbon, I can now choose my label. If we make these shared parameters, we'll be able to actually schedule out the various different structural opening sizes. So let's do that. So we'll select our shared parameter. I'm going to create a new shared parameter file from first principles, and I'll just call this one training. 
what you'd in practice do is perhaps add this to your existing share parameter file. I'm going to create a new group here, so we'll call this one structural openings. And now we can create our parameters. So I'm going to call um, my first parameter structural opening length. And this is going to be length in here. And we'll create the second parameter, and this will be structural opening width. Okay, so then my two parameters created. I'm going to now select OK. And I'm going to start with my structural opening length. Now, this one, I'm going to make an instance parameter. And you can now see that my standard dimension has been converted to a parameter. Let's now assign the structural opening width to this dimension here. So once again, I'll select the dimension, click on the Create Parameter tool, go to my Share Parameter file that I've just created, and select the required parameter. Make sure that this is instance-based, and click OK. So you can now see that I have my two parameters set. We can now go ahead and model the physical opening itself. So in this case, we're going to create a void form and void extrusion. I'll simply trace over the reference planes, ensuring that I lock all of the line work, and then click the green tick. If I open up the 3D view, what I'm now going to do is make sure that this is deep enough to cut through any element I want. And what I'm going to now do is actually cut the element out, like so. OK, so there's my physical opening. Let's go back to the floor plane. Actually, when we create plans or sections of these structural openings, we'll probably want to see an opening symbol in there. So I'm going to go and insert that as a detail component. One of the great tricks you can do with families is you can insert detail components into these 3D families, and that will automatically detail the family for you. So we'll go ahead here and load in a detail component. OK, so here it is, and we'll select the family and click Open and we can position this down. Now in this example here, once I've placed this in, you can now see that we have length and width. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign these to match up with my shared parameters. OK, so now my 2D family now precisely matches in dimensional terms my 3D family. So if I now flex some of the reference planes here, you can see as I flex these, the 2D detail is also flexing with it. So all that remains for me to do now is to constrain this family. So we'll align and lock it to my center lines. And there's my, my detail component created. OK, so let's go ahead and save this. So we'll call this one uh, structural opening and save. And I'll now load this into my project and close. OK, so I'm going to start by placing one of these out on the floor slab, like so. Now, as soon as that's placed out, you can see that the structural opening has now been created. If I go into my ground floor slab, what you'll now notice is I have my structural opening um, on the model itself. Now, of course, I can align it to whatever I want. So we'll just go ahead and move that. Uh, perhaps we'll want to dimension it to a particular location. So, of course, we can do that. We can add some relevant dimensions in, like so. And what I'm now going to do is physically size this structural opening. So you can see I've got these instance parameters in here, and that really and that allows us to actually see these shape handles. Now I can use the shape handles to drive each instance of the structural opening, or I can go into my dialog box here and I can start to type in some various different dimensions that I might want to use. Okay, so just moving on a bit further, you can now see that I have my three structural opening families placed out. Uh, what I'm now going to do is just give them some marks. So we could say um, ST01, ST02, 
and ST03. Okay, so I've now marked those families. What I'm now going to do is produce a schedule of these. So if I go to my view ribbon, we'll go ahead and go into schedules and quantities. Uh, in this case, it's just a generic model, but I'm going to change the schedule name. So we'll put in here structural openings and we'll get rid of the word schedule afterwards. We don't need to see that. And what we can now do is we can bring forward the mark, which is how I've named and labeled those items. But what we'll now see in here is I have my two shared parameters that I created previously. So we'll have shared parameter um, for structural opening length and the other one for structural opening width. If I now click OK, you can now see that I have my schedule. Now what's quite interesting with this is if I go into the schedule and I start to change some of the data in here. So let's say that I decide to have this uh, as 1200 and perhaps this is 1200. What that will do is instantly change my structural opening. So you can now see these are 1200 by 2500. So that's really quite useful. If I go back and change those perhaps to 900 in here, and we'll do the same with this one here. Of course, when I go back into my um, schedule here and we look at our structural opening schedule, again, they've changed to 900. So what you've now seen here is the significance between type and instance parameters and also the benefit of using shared parameters so that we can tag and schedule and understand all of our information. Okay, I hope that's been useful for you.